Hi everyone, welcome back for November's update on solar and energy usage at home here in Norfolk. And what a weird month it's been. Um, quite, a, quite a lot to share with you. Um, I've already done part one showing you um, some of the issues that I've had with the Give Energy battery over the month. But the big one is the energy tariff that I've changed to. But before I talk about that, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to a few people. Thank you, Charlie, Andrew, and Paul, for using my Octopus Energy referral code. It's not just because you've used it, it's it's the difference it makes with doing these videos. Sometimes, you know, you get a lot of um, not so nice comments and you get some hassle out of doing this. People don't really appreciate the effort that goes into it. So every now and then when you get a really nice comment or somebody says they've used your referral code as a way of giving back to say thank you for doing these videos, well, it really makes the difference and uh, it really does make you want to carry on doing it. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you also to everyone that has left really encouraging and positive comments. I do appreciate it. So the first thing that's changed is the energy tariff, and that's a big change for me. And it's not just because it makes a tangible difference or anything like that, because I don't actually expect moving to Octopus Agile away from Bulb. Um, I don't expect that to give me a big financial gain. The change that it's made is how, how I use energy and how I think about it, and that's probably worth discussing. With Bulb, I was on a single tariff. It was a nice cheap price, it was a reasonable uh, daily standing charge, and it's the same price for every hour of the day. So I didn't have to worry about what I did or how I used energy. It was simple and it worked. The service was good, the email systems that they had and the meter readings were all fantastic. The reason why I moved across to Octopus Agile was mainly because I wanted to know what it was like. There's a lot of people talking about it, um, a lot of people raving about Octopus Agile, so I thought I'd give it a go. And they were offering a £100 referral credit anyway, so there was no risk at all I couldn't lose by swapping and giving it a go. Because you're not inside a contract either, you can come out any time you like. So that's why, why I moved, and I chose to go to Agile, not Go, because I wanted to try what, let's say, what I thought was the hardest one to start with, the most complicated tariff, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I could have these half-hour readings. I didn't think the meter here would work. We don't have a great mobile signal here, so I didn't think the meter would work, but it does. It works perfectly, so I'm really, really pleased with that. So we're now on a tariff where Octopus set the um, rates a day in advance, and there's a different price for every half an hour of the day. Now, for me, because I'm a very low user, that doesn't make that much difference to me. But when I run out of energy in the battery and I have to think about recharging the battery and at what time of day I do it, and is it the most cost-effective price, then it does make a difference. Not just price-wise, but my thinking, and that I'm always trying to optimise things and trying to make things work. I mean, why have something unless it's definitely going to make a tangible difference? And yet what I'm noticing, if if I charge the battery overnight and I charge at 8 or 9 pence per kilowatt hour, then I'm saving from using energy during the day of 10, 11, 12 pence a kilowatt hour because that's the price at that time. And that sort of doesn't make sense because by the time I put the energy into the battery, 8 or 9 pence, and all the charging losses that I have, and the fact this Give Energy battery keeps dumping energy out to the grid in export, because it doesn't balance as well as some other battery systems, then the amount of losses I have are probably at least 30%. So by the time you take 30% into account, eight or nine pence is exactly the same as 11 or 12 pence. So I'm not gaining at all in doing that. The only time that I really gain is where the price goes up at between four and seven o'clock in the afternoon evening. And those are the prices where they're 20 to 35 pence a kilowatt hour. Then I do save financially. But I'm also saving the grid, aren't I? But I'm a low user anyway. I don't use a lot of energy in that time period anyway. So it's fun trying it. It's fun seeing when you get a plunge, and I have had one, I have charged the car a little bit, heated the hot water and charged some of the battery uh, on timers at 0.5 pence a kilowatt hour. And that's great fun. It's very positive and makes you feel good. Um, it also makes you feel good that you're not using energy at that peak time, the four to seven o'clock. But it introduces a bit of like, well, a bit like range anxiety in an electric car. You've got a four to seven o'clock anxiety. Have I got enough to get me through? The whole point is you're going to reduce costs and avoid that period. But with Octopus Agile, you've obviously got those higher costs. And if you do use energy in that time, then you're sort of defeating 
um, the object of what you're doing, trying to save money using cheaper energy at cheaper times. So it adds a level of complexity. And what I've found is I've almost got information overload. You know, I'm now thinking about how to use my solar energy. Do I charge the battery? Do I heat the hot water? Do I heat the you know, do I charge the car? What's the priority? How many kilowatt hours have I made? There's lots of data. There's lots of stuff going on. So to add all these extra numbers for every half an hour and to know and to have to look up what the price points are, to know when to charge and what my state of charge is and will I run out? It's very different to how it was when I had a single tariff. Uh, with a single tariff, if I ran out, I ran out. It was no big deal. Now, if I run out, it was what time of day is it? Will I get past four to seven o'clock? What time should I charge to make sure I can get through four to seven o'clock? Now, I know that's not going to happen very many days over winter. You know, there are still days of sunshine in winter, so it's not a huge effort and it's not ongoing. But I've got to confess, in the first couple of weeks, it does feel a bit like information overload. I think I'm already looking for automation. I'm already looking for how can I just set one time schedule and just leave it and let it run? So yeah, interesting trying it, interesting moving to Octopus Agile. I'm probably not the best cased example of getting the best out of the product because I'm a low user already. So the savings really aren't there for me. And it's clear to me that I think um, automation products are what's key in the future with this product because it, it's not necessarily a hassle, but it could be one thing too many that you've got to worry about and think about. And for those that just want a simple life, it might be a little bit too much. Now, you know, again, people can move to Octopus Agile and they can not worry about it. They can just use energy how they like and the average price they're going to pay is going to be less than what it would be otherwise because they're choosing to do things at different times of day and avoid that four to seven o'clock anyway. So you don't have to go to a huge effort to make savings with Octopus Agile. I'm making it worse for myself because I like to try and optimize things. So anyway, that's what's going on. And um, it is making me think, well, maybe Octopus Go, which is another tariff available from Octopus, maybe that's the route for me because it gives that single price for the rest of the day. But there's like a pr plunge price. There's a cheap price at, I think it's midnight or four in the morning, four or five hours of cheap electricity. And that might suit because it's a single time. You set the charger and you keep it at that time and it's a single price, that might work better for me just for managing it rather than the price difference, because I really don't think I'm going to have a price difference between any of these products, to be honest. Anyway, there you go. That's enough about my move to Octopus Agile. The big thing that I got from moving to Octopus was the in-house energy display, though. I didn't have one that was accurate for showing the import and export, what was happening right now. So it's really nice to have one of those again. The other things that have been going on are obviously with lockdown coming and going and uh, the new electric car arriving. Yes, I've got a mini electric on the driveway. I have been charging it. I have been using it, but not very much, not many miles because you know, we're still in lockdown. I haven't been going out very far. And that's partly why I haven't been doing as many mini videos as well. So the videos that I do are, are what's on my mind, what's happening here at the time. So if I'm out driving the mini more and doing more in the mini, there'll be more mini videos. And I wanted to do one the other day of um, night driving to test the LED headlights and give you an update while I was in the Mini uh, doing it. But, but it was completely foggy. There was no point because all you'd see is a, a whiteout, basically, with the lights on full. So that was a bit of a uh, disaster. So I'm looking forward to doing that again as soon as I get an opportunity. So give energy battery wise, it's working, it's doing the job, it's saving me some energy. I am using my excess solar energy and cheap energy from overnight and it's doing the job. It's just not perfect. I had yet another problem today, this morning, where I charged up between 3.30 in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning just to give myself a little boost before daylight. And... Uh, the battery wasn't working from six o'clock onwards. Now I can understand when you set a timer and during that time a period that the battery won't be discharging because it's only charging. So it stops actually working, giving energy out to um, cover your house load. So during the timer period, it shouldn't work. But I only had the timer set from 3.30 to four o'clock in the morning. So, and yet between six o'clock and seven o'clock in the morning, the battery wasn't working. So it obviously hadn't come out of its mode and hadn't gone back to um, discharging energy properly. Now, whether that's because it's the first of the month and it went over at midnight, because coincidentally, just before midnight, there was no energy being used. The battery was covering it just after midnight. It looks like almost exactly at midnight, 
it stopped working. And then after I did a recharge at 3.30 to 4 o'clock, it didn't start up again. So, yeah, I think something went on. I have reported that to give energy. Hopefully, I'll get something back to find out what's going on. Solar panels. Let's quickly talk about solar panels. Um, the last few days of November, I actually had zero solar generation for my solar edge inverter. So I've got eight 300-watt um, panels connected to an SE2000 solar edge inverter, and that generated nothing. Now, I think that was rounded down to nothing. I think there was a minuscule amount. But basically, for three days, the inverter didn't fire up. It didn't have enough energy to actually turn on. It sat idle for the whole period. Um, I haven't seen that before. I haven't noticed that before. Normally, even with really low energy days, there's normally a glimmer of brightness and you get a little bit of energy. Now, my other array with the Solis inverter, that did generate. So on those three days, I think I generated 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and 1 kilowatt hour. So really small amounts on that array. But I should have generated 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a kilowatt hour minimum on this second solar edge array. Now, I've, I've had this concern, shall we say, about solar edge from the day that I first got it. Um, in the summer, it's brilliant. But in low light conditions, it just doesn't seem to deliver the proportional performance that you would expect for the 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels that I've got versus the other array of 3.9 kilowatts. The percentage difference between them is vastly different in low light conditions, so much so that these three days in November, it was zero. I have reported that to Solar Edge and they are looking at it for me. Um, they do acknowledge that there looks like a problem because it's holding in idle mode. But from my research online, I'm, I'm starting to guess that it's something to do with the optimizers, that the optimizers take a little bit more voltage, a little bit more power to fire up. So as well as the inverter needing some power, the optimizers need some power. So you need to get to a higher base level with a solar edge configuration before it starts actually converting electricity and giving you some benefit from the panels. That, that's my sort of guess and interpretation on it as to why Solus is working, because it's not optimized, but solar edge just isn't. I probably would have been better off not having optimizers on at all. But I don't know. I am preempting what solar edge find. Maybe it's just a startup, a wake up profile change that's needed. I don't know. Anyway, we shall see. Watch this space. Uh, I haven't really got a big problem today. The sun's out. The panels are back on. It's not a fault as in I'm down. Um, it's just a uh, performance issue in low light conditions that it would be nice to get some answers. Right, that's enough waffles. So um, let's get on. Let's share the numbers with you. Let's share the data. It has been a good November, better than last November. And it was almost, almost better than October this year. So yeah. Performance was actually OK over the entire month. So let's take you through the key numbers product by product, because they do differ when you're looking at each product. So Give Energy said that we consumed 277 kilowatt hours. 82.4% came from solar energy. 17.6% came from the grid. Not too bad for November. Give Energy says we generated 282 kilowatt hours. We exported 28 kilowatt hours, imported from the grid 48 kilowatt hours, and used 84 kilowatt hours from the battery. This is a good chart from the Give Energy system showing the imported energy from the grid. Those high red spikes are basically where we ran out of battery energy and used more grid energy, but also where we imported overnight for cheap electricity on the Octopus Agile tariff. And then there's a couple where we actually consumed more energy than we wanted because we were doing firmware upgrades. The My Energy app is showing 277 kilowatt hours of generation, slightly less than the Give Energy number. It's showing 82 kilowatt hours of import from the grid, a lot more than Give Energy, and 27, 28 kilowatt hours exported to the grid and uh, that's quite similar. The other My Energy stats, 37 kilowatt hours on the eddy heating the hot water, 65 kilowatt hours charging the uh, electric mini on the Zappi, and the home consumed a total of 229 kilowatt hours. That home number includes battery charging too. The My Energy eddy device only shows 30 kilowatt hours for heating the hot water on the device itself, but the difference from 37 to 30 that's the amount of energy that we boosted. So we didn't use solar energy, we used grid energy. 
So looking at our 3.9 kilowatt array, we generated 181.3 kilowatt hours for the month. That's our benchmark figure from the 3.9 kilowatt array. Last year, 141.9 kilowatt hours, so we're well above that. And last month in October, 198.8, so we didn't quite beat that. Looking at the day by day numbers now for the month, uh, what we can see is at the end, the lowest day was 0.6 kilowatt hours. That's the worst that we generated. That's one of the days where the solar edge uh, inverter generated nothing. And the highest was 13 kilowatt hours. The solar edge data now, I do like these graphs, shows 104 kilowatt hours for the month. Compared to last month, October, 111 kilowatt hours. We nearly did it. And then the solar edge data for import and export, that's the most accurate to the actual meter. Exported, 39. Imported, 61 kilowatt hours. Last year, we only exported 16, so we exported more this year, this November. And we imported last year 167, a lot more. Putting both sets of solar array data together, this is what the chart looks like. And if we zoom in, we can see that November, slightly less than October, but better than last year, better than last October, November, December, etc. And plugging all that data into my overall chart, we can see the blue bars at the bottom. That's grid import, and we can see it's gradually going up this year. The amount of generated solar has come down consistently. The amount of water heating we're doing has come down. The amount of electric car charging has come down as well. And the amount we're exporting, that's reducing too. Basically, with the less energy we're producing on the solar panels, the less energy we're actually consuming. So we generated 285 kilowatt hours from the inverters, or measured 278 kilowatt hours from the applications. We exported 39 kilowatt hours. We charged the battery, the home battery, with 111 kilowatt hours. Hot water, 37 kilowatt hours. Charged the electric mini with 65 kilowatt hours. And we imported 61 kilowatt hours from the grid. So there you go, that's the summary for the month. Last year though, here's the comparison. Less generation, less exported, less battery in that we didn't have a battery at the time, more hot water heating, we didn't use the oil boiler, and a lot more car charging, and a lot more from the grid. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Do appreciate it, and uh, I hope there was something useful and interesting in there for you. See you again soon. Bye for now.